We're going to revisit now that study on the high child poverty rates facing Indigenous children in Canada. The report shows little improvement over the last decade. Researchers say 47% of First Nations children on and off reserve live in poverty. That's two and a half times above the national average. The number rises to 53% for First Nations children who live on reserves. For, re for reaction and analysis, I want to bring in Roland Baldhead. He is a student at the University of Saskatchewan and a youth council representative for the Assembly of First Nations. So Roland, how does seeing a report like this make you feel? Well, first, when we look at it, it's being an Indigenous youth within Canada, you're kind of used to it. But then you can't help but feel uh, and think about why am I used to these uh, analysis that are coming out negatively about Indigenous peoples involving statistics. Um, of course, this is a very great study have done, and it just actually shows uh, it it shows the reality of what is actually going on and it just yeah why are you used to it well because if you if we think about if we just look at statistics in general we could see that statistics uh, show that indigenous students or youth on reserve are high, uh, 51 percent likely to be more in poverty as well as in urban areas but if we look at different statistics uh whether it's suicide whether it's uh drug and alcohol related we are only focused on these things and quite honestly those are more prevalent within our society today but we don't hear the graduation rates as much we don't hear about how many students are registered or applied to university and got accepted or how many students are doing good within these societies. That's interesting. So do you think that having reports like this that aren't showing much movement uh, for better or for worse or are focused on some of the negative challenges that uh, still exist and are prevalent, is, is, that, is that somehow bad? Well, no, not per se bad because it does create great dialogue. It creates the conversation of what can we do to address the needs and focus our strategic plans on whether it's education, uh, funding for un underfunded communities within uh, Canada. Uh, poverty is linked to opportunities. Where are these opportunities being given? Are these opportunities only being given off reserve where they have to leave their communities to, um, to pursue an opportunity? And then they, we got to question and ask ourselves as well, are, is this part of the system where I have to leave home, I have to leave my uh, grandma or grandpa and I can't learn my language. I have to leave the ceremonies that keep me who I am. Um, and we got to figure out how we could break down these barriers for, in order for students to reach success. And so you're now, I understand you're in your final year of an undergraduate degree, right? In, in, in a, a Bachelor of Education. Tell me about your experience and your success so far. Well, my success was due to uh, I'm very rich in my culture and I was lucky enough to live in both worlds where I grew up in the urban areas and as well as family, would, I would be able to go visit family back home. I got the best of two worlds, but uh, per se. Um, my education is, I strongly noted, it's due to my indigenous knowledge of who I am and how I can relate it to this Western knowledge that is more, uh, I guess, prized within society today. Um, so that would be a, a big attribute for my success is being true to who I am, which is Indigenous, and then learning how to not uh, infuse myself within systems, but actually see how I can become a help and decolonize and break down barriers for future generations to come. What message would you want to send to other Indigenous youth who see, you know, reports like this, who see statistics like this? Well, they most likely have seen uh, statistics like this. They, have, they are told every day. 
the thing is that it takes the human aspect out of it. And I would say most importantly is you're indigenous and you're in your home right now. So what you say matters and to keep voicing, to tell the leaders, whether it's provincial or federally, that the job is not being done right and it needs to be um, done correctly and um, efficient. Uh, I, reading the study, it says from 2006 to 2016, it went from 50, or let's say 60 to 54 or something. I just uh, skimmed through the thing, like I said. Um, so what can we do to work together to address this problem? Um, and the question and the answer to that is it starts with us. It starts with the youth and where we want to go thinking seven generations down the road. So this report, it's just four months out from the next federal election. So do you believe the Indigenous issues are going to be a priority for you when you vote? Would you like them to be? Well, of course, because I'm Indigenous, reading the statistics, uh, you know, these are uh, very dampening to the mood and to the climate of where whatever Indigenous communities uh, you come from. Of course, I don't speak for all, but I, I can only speak for, my, for myself and my um, self-experiences and my community. Um, but I would question and I would ask every Indigenous student out there or youth for that matter, is to think critically on how these elections are being used. Um, are, are, do we only become a topic of discussion when when reports come out to this, or do we come? Or do we only come come about to conversation when elections are? Are I? It would be very cautious to not be used as um, political game, and we would have to make sure that they are standing up to their words and are um, doing what they had promised with not only treaties, but within uh, their election campaign. Roland, good, good of you to take the time to speak to us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Roland Baldhead in Saskatoon. He is a Youth Council representative for the Assembly of First Nations.